Wake up, everybody. Wake up. Hallmark Entertainment and Crayola are adding to your family's fun with five exciting animated adventures on video. The Three Little Pigs the Movie, the all-new Ugly Duckling sing-along tunes, and the Ugly Duckling video. Plus, Small Stories and Brambley Hedge Autumn and Winter. Now you can bring home the classic story of the three little pigs in an all-new one-hour animated adventure. Who's afraid of the big bad wolf? <laughs> Join them as they sing new songs. Please, make your houses stronger for my sake. And build their homes. I never realized work could be so much fun. Until the big bad wolf... Please let me into your house now, won't you? Huffs and puffs and blows their house down. And as an added bonus, the three little pigs comes with a free activity booklet and a box of Crayola crayons. Strike out a simple song whenever trouble comes along. Hans Christian Andersen's beloved classic, The Ugly Duckling, is now more fun than ever with the collection of sensational songs. Crayola's all-new video, The Ugly Duckling Sing-Along Tunes, will bring your family together for hours of sing-along fun. Also available, the full-length feature classic, The Ugly Duckling. I'm Augustus. I'm usually called ugly. This timeless family favorite also comes with a free activity booklet and a box of Crayola crayons. Come on! And for more animated excitement, we'll take you into the enchanting world of Brambley Hedge Autumn and Winter. I'm going on an adventure! A magical miniature village where the world's most adorable country mice live and play. <laughs> This wonderful new adventure comes with a bonus featurette and free activity book and Crayola crayons. And for your younger children, it's time to play with Small Stories, a colorful new generation of fairy tales that will make growing up lots of fun. Also with activity book and Crayola crayons. So bring home the kind of joy and laughter that will delight your entire family over and over again. <laughs> with these five Crayola Presents animated tales. Because there's only one childhood and only one Crayola. Available wherever videos are sold. Distributed by Hallmark Home Entertainment and Family Home Entertainment.
was just about in the middle of everything. In the middle of the 19th century, the 1800s, and right in the middle of the USA, Hannibal, Missouri, where Tom Sawyer, somewhere between youth and manhood, found adventure waiting behind every tree, every rock, every hill. And this is his story. Tom! Tom Sawyer! What kept you? My dinner's getting cold. I would have been right on time if it wasn't for the bank robbers. The bank's been robbed? Would have been if it wasn't for me. <sighs> and what did you do? Sent him running, that's what. Charged at him with my six shooter. Bam, bam, bam. Got two of them. Poor Southers. What an imagination. It'll be front page in the Daily Bugle tomorrow. Wait and see. I'll be sure to look. In the meantime, I'll bring the soup out. While he was dreaming up bank robbers, I studied for tomorrow's test so our family isn't a laughing stock. Well, ain't that nice of you. Want to do something for me? What? Don't tell nobody we're cousins. <laughs> It's still warm. Hand me your bowl, Sid. Tom? Now we bow our heads and thank the good Lord for his love and generosity. That's all. Well, you're gonna make up for that fun by doing extra chores. Right off by whitewashing the outside fence. The whole fence? Well, how would we look to neighbors with just half a whitewashed fence? How about me half and Cousin Sid half? He's busy with other things. And it's either the fence or no allowance for a week plus no desserts. And it might just be both. Before your mama passed on, I swore I'd raise you right. But between your mischief here and in school... I just don't know if I'm getting it done. I just don't know. Polly keeps going around, just acting so angry. Like she's ready to put me in jail, or practically hang me. No allowance for one whole week, and no dessert. Just for putting a frog in her soup. Now who does that hurt? Life can be cruel. Life can be cruel. From the minute you're awake, every step you take, you break another rule. If this world's a joy, for me it ain't begun. I'm forever getting blamed for things I haven't even done yet. Ain't it a pity? Life could be pretty. Like a circus or a show if I didn't have to go to school. Where I'm treated like a dunce upon a stool. Till I get to be a man, this life sure 
can be cruel Now you take a kid like my cousin Sid He can get away with things Like he floats through air on a pair of angel wings But I can depend on my one good friend Old Huckleberry Finn He tells jokes can make you laugh Till you're doubled up in half And in his whole life Old Huck ain't took one bath Instead of just nothing Life could be something If grown-ups didn't treat kids like a fool Seems to me as though down any road I'm choosing Each road I'm choosing Gets more confusing What you doing, making all them sevens? Which is, why sevens? Don't you know nothing? Sevens will drive off witches every time. Drives them half crazy. I never heard that. Well, you're hearing it now. Sevens not only protects the house, but me too. Because I'm the one that's painting them. If I painted them, would it protect me from witches? Sure it would, and more than likely, your whole family too. How about letting me paint some? You'd have to give me something. Genuine brass? Well, just look how it shines. Okay, it's a deal. Wild them sevens. Witches, don't you know nothing? After 77 sevens, just fill in the rest. <laughs> sleeping this time of day. I was up early doing errands for the Witter Douglas. He got a nickel for it, though. Don't old Jim do her errands? Well, that's why she got him in the first place. But he's as strong as two mules, just does the heavy stuff now. Half the reason I go up there is to sit and hear old Jim's stories, ones he's brought over from Africa, voodoo and stuff. Huh? One day, we're gonna go treasure hunting, me and Jim. An old pirate told him there's gold hidden all over these parts. Can we count you in when we go? You sure can. We could all get rich. But I mean, rich. <laughs> Uh, to, to, to me, graveyards is just plain scary, ain't they to you? Uh-huh. Right. About as scary as 13 black cats. I know for a fact graveyards got evil spirits flying about. I heard that. I sure did. Get back in here, you idiot. And no walking in and out of here. Got a high-level business meeting going on. What was that about graveyards? Let's sneak around the back and listen. Yeah, yeah. Now, 
May I continue? Please do. It has been reported that as the departed was laid to rest, the widow, as if throwing a last kiss, dropped her wedding ring and his gold watch into that grave. Gee, I, how'd you know? Don't ever question my sources, knucklehead. The undertaker himself told me. So a fortune awaits. Calling for a shovel, pickaxes, and two strong backs. But what's in it for the undertaker? Is, is that a, a new acquisition? An American Eagle. Ah, yes. You know, I must commend you for your patriotism. But what about the undertaker? And being the purveyor of the information and the future supplier of the required implements by virtue of his trade, he's in for an equal share. Well, I don't see why we need him. Did you impart the information? No. Do you know the location of the grave? No. And most important, do you own a shovel? Oh, all right, he's in. I, of course, would be right alongside you if my delicate lungs could withstand the night air. And the caper must be executed when the night is blackest. Though I can't participate, I have complete faith in your ability. After all, when it comes to a dirty deed, are we not supreme? Supreme! supreme. When it comes to a foul act, who leads the pack? We, we do! Is there a deed so infamous? It is beneath us. No! We are simply horrible, just deplorable cutthroats. We are reprehensible, indefensible cutthroats. We would do you win for ten cents to a quarter? Imagine the stain on your family name If we was your brother and married your daughter There's no way to handle us We are scandalous misfits We'll steal the shirt you're wearing Not even caring if it fits Though we haven't met, at least as yet In time we'll get to you and show you what us cutthroats can do. If you care to have your house robbed, something stolen from your yard, we are always at your service. May we gift you if our business card. We know every trick we excel at picking a pocket As for your front door, don't you even bother to lock it We won't be outdone, each and every one is a star Whether stealing chickens or goats All you petty thieves should take notes it is rare to meet the cutthroats we are. Rare to meet the cutthroats we are. The cemetery at midnight? That don't beat all. A lot of help you're gonna be, you drunken moron. 
only had a couple. Graveyards scare me stiff. Start digging, Fatso. Uh-oh. Yow! Oh! Oh! Ah! Oh! Oh! You dang near crippled me, you idiot! <laughs> Shh! That was close. Too close. I'm ready to head out of here. Can't now. The plan is here. Shh! They're starting to dig. What are we gonna do with him? Get over by the tree and sleep it off, you bloated fool. You're out of the deal. You're gonna have to get your hands dirty. Well, only if I get his share of the deal. I'm getting his share. Split it. You'll get your skull split. And I'm out of it. You two-bit hudlum. Two-bit hudlum? Let's hear you call me that again. A tattooed two-bit hudlum. I'm out of here, so just give me my shovel. Here's your shovel. <laughs> Sacred Blood Oath. Okay. The first one blabs, the first one snitches. Gets haunted by ghosts and bit by witches. If in one of us tells, neither one will survive. We'll get boiled, boiled in oil, oil or skinned, skinned alive. And Joe will do it to us, you know. That's why we ain't seen nothing, have we? We ain't seen nothing. I'd like the class to welcome Miss Becky Thatcher, whose parents just moved to Hannibal a week ago. George Washington is known as the father of... Uh -huh. So, I'm a floppy-eared baboon, am I? You didn't write this, did you, Miss Thatcher? No, sir. I'm certain you didn't put the slate there, did you, Sydney? No, it's just too childish. Unless you tell me who put the slate on your desk, Miss Thatcher. I'll have to ask your parents to meet me tomorrow morning in my office. I put it there. I should have known as much. At four o'clock, Mr. Sawyer, we'll discuss a suitable punishment. There's no point in having your aunt here again. It does absolutely no good. No good at all. Did he paddle you? 
I hear he does that. Uh-huh. But I got worse troubles than that. I got a secret I could get skinned alive for telling. But it weighs heavy on you when someone gets blamed for something they didn't do. I sure know about that. If there's anything I can do to help, you can count on me. Well... Well... Well what? Do you have a boyfriend yet? No, not yet. Hi, fellas. What you up to? Hi, Jim. Hi, Jim. See them bars? That's where they got old Muff Potter. Huh? Well, except for his heavy drinking, I ain't known him to be a bad sort. He ain't, but he's sure in big trouble. Well, I feel for him, because I got trouble in my own. You have? Yeah, the widow Douglas is so low on cash, she might have to sell me. Holy mackerel! Suppose you get sold to someone who takes a whip to you for no reason. It can't happen, you know. I do know. But it'll work out all right, because I keep praying to the Lord every day. And I do it real early in the morning, because he gets too busy around noon. <laughs> but I got to get going. Remember me telling you about Robin Hood? The one who steals from the rich and gives to the poor? Right. But he does lots of good deeds, like seeing that justice is done. Boy, would I give to have him and his band right straight into Hannibal and free poor old Muff.
Pops. What you doing, Mother? Mixing a batch of cookies. The Widow Douglas is coming for dinner tonight. I hope Tom gets home from school early. He's so late these days. And I know why, too. He's always off somewhere with that Becky Thatcher. The whole class is making fun of how they pass notes and make goo goo eyes at each other. Is that so? So you can count on him being late. If you need me, I'll be upstairs doing my homework and deciding who to pray for tonight. You might consider praying for the widow Douglas. Her money's run so low that I bought an extra big ham so she could take some home. If it makes you happy, I'll consider her. Did you see my glasses? I can hardly read this recipe book without them. I'll look for them, and if they're upstairs, I'll bring them down immediately. And that's your first kiss ever? Ever. How about you? Well, in the school I used to go to, there was this boy, Herbert. One day he jumped out of the broom closet and kissed me. Did you kiss him back? Of course not. Honest? Cross my heart, I wouldn't kiss a boy back if I didn't love him. I've got something else to give you. What? Well, you said you wanted to get married someday. Someday I do. But not now, because I'm only 12. Don't you want to someday? I've been thinking about it. Someday I do. And as long as I'm getting married... Yes? I'd like to do it with you. So if you'd like to do it with me, I brought this for you to wear. It's only a sea god band for now. But can I put it on your finger? Thank you. I suppose we ought to kiss again. I suppose we ought to. Everything that you do, you are doing for two. When you're married, married, and a ring's there to show that, to let the world know that you're married, married. And though you once were all alone, you never have to be alone no more. And when you and there's no sun being sad beside someone ain't half as bad as being sad before if a garden was ours i would pick
pick you nice blouse when we're married. Married. Have a dog and a cat. We'd sure wanna have that. And someday a baby. Although the ring for now is just a cigar band, you say it's never been on someone else's hand. If you swear to that, then I will wear it to when we're married. of the deadly secret I'm carrying. Mm -hmm. That ham sure looks yummy. Sorry we had to slice it all up, but it's the only way we could slide it through the bars. Them cookies were just fresh baked by my Aunt Polly. Well, I'll save the ones with the sprinkles for last. Or maybe I should eat them first in case they hang me. They ain't gonna hang you. They can't hang you for something you ain't done. Well, I ain't sure if I done it or not. When a man's the tippler I am, you don't know what you did and what you didn't, and where you was and where you weren't, and sometimes even who you is and who you ain't. It'll all come out all right. You'll be out of there in no time. Hope you scrambled eggs the way you like them. Some thief must have got in here and made off with my ham. Scrambled eggs is just fine. The company is what counts. It's a dreadful shame you might have to sell Jim. Oh, it didn't break my heart to have to. He's like family. But I just might if the bank don't give me my loan. for you, Tom Sawyer, Amy Lawrence. What about her? You kissed her before you ever kissed me. That's what about her, and she's telling it all around school. I never kissed Amy Lawrence. Horse feathers, I just never want to see you again, let alone get married to you. Marry Amy Lawrence. What? Tom here's got love troubles. Ain't that something? He was on his way to get married to some gal. She gave him his walking papers. Good be it happened for the best. Getting married's a real big step. Was you completely in love or just in like? I don't really know by now. <laughs> well, I best get these here supplies home. See you, boys. Hope it all works out, Tom. Get up. I don't even know why you bother with girls. Either do I. And it don't help matters none that Aunt Polly don't hardly talk to me these days because of the missing ham. Well, I'm in the same boat. I can't get one nice word on my pap. 
All he does is whack me upside the head. Yesterday in school, Mr. Dobbins jumped all over me because I couldn't name all the apostles, even though I did come up with David and Goliath. I don't even know why you bother with school. Either do I. Sometimes I think if I was dead and gone, no one would shed even one tear. Shall we find out? Find out what? If they'd shed one tear. If we was dead and gone, we could just disappear off the face of the earth, hide it over on Jackson Island, and in a couple of days, they'd think we was goners. Yeah, they'd sure be kicking themselves because they wasn't nice to us. Now, wouldn't they? Right. A whole pack of them would just end up kicking themselves. When we get hungry, we'll fish for food just like the pirates did. You know how many pirates crossed this here river a hundred years ago? Shiploads, I'll bet. That's why there's buried treasure all over these parts. Wish Jim knew just where it was buried. He really put his mind to it. He'd know. With the powers he's got, he could see right straight into the ground or high into the sky. Wow! If you was a pirate, who'd you get to walk the plank first? I don't know. Well, Tattoo Joe would sure be first. After that, either my teacher or my cousin Sid. What do I do with these scurvy scoundrels? Feed them to the sharks! Feed them to the sharks! They're a scruffy bunch of sinners, but they'll make delicious dinners. Feed them to the sharks! La 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 They're a bunch of Lincoln founders, but a lovely lunch for flounders. Dunk them in the drink. La 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 la. Now should it be done just one by one, or all of them in a pack? Cause with this here bunch, the sharks might throw them back. We can hardly wait. What we celebrate? When the only sound we pick up is a gurgle or a hiccup coming from the deep. Then we go to sleep. And the Sandman comes repeating our remarks. Dunk them in the drink. Feed it to the sharks. La 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 Aha! Are you Becky Thatcher? Yes. The Becky Thatcher that lives at 332 Maple in Hannibal, Missouri? Yes. Well, if you're that Becky Thatcher, you're guilty of accusing a fine young fella of something he didn't do. And you couldn't care less about Amy Lawrence, who lives at he don't even know where and doesn't even care to find out because he'd never go near her house anyway. Is that the truth? It sure is. And there's only one way you can escape walking the plank with the others. How? 
Bring it here, matey. Here it is. If you take it back, I'll spare you from the sharks. And if I take it back, will you also have mercy on the poor, unfortunate souls who languish here beside me? Yes. All except Tattoo Joe. Nothing's gonna help him. got drowned, and they're trying to get the body to the surface. I wonder who. How about us? Yeah, how about us? They ain't seen hide nor hair of us for three days, and they think we're goners. They think we're goners. I like that. I wonder if they're crying and carrying on. I wonder the same thing. Should we go see? Sure. We ain't enjoying it being stuck over here. Let's go. They're in a much better place Up where the Lord can reward them Though all us who So happy that you came. Baby, pain and grief. To come out in all this rain. Why would life's just brief? Let me thank you for the flowers. These sweet girls do is flowers. Yes, the paper said showers. They're in a much better place. I want to thank you all for being here for me in my hour of need. The, the boys are up with the angels now, and we won't question the Lord for taking them. My Tom was one in a million, a boy who never caused me a moment's grief. I, right now, can still see his smiling face as he went off to school the happy look on his face when he completed his homework and, and said his prayers at bedtime. Not only me, who's his father, but the whole community's lost a fine, upstanding citizen. It's a young fellow who had an outstretched hand to one and all who was in need. As his dad, I'll never... I'll... You know something? The least we can do is go in and show our appreciation. Yeah, that's the least we can do. We have to wonder why these two fine young people were taken from our midst, but we can never question the Lord's way. I never knew Huck personally, but... Oh, dear. As you can see, you'll be glad to know we ain't dead. We just came in to thank you for the kind words. Now you can just go on with the service. Sorry to interrupt, 
Oh, Tom! Uh, oh! oh. <laughs> oh. is the fairest in the world. As Americans, we are guaranteed that every man and woman accused is innocent until proven guilty. And that goes for the defendant, too, even though he is the town drunk and a worthless I object to you calling my client the town drunk. How about just worthless bum? That's more like it. To continue, 
Their accused, no good varmint, was caught red-handed with the weapon, a shovel, right there by his side. And we'd have to be nincompoops and imbeciles to say he ain't the one who did it. <laughs> Nevertheless, all abide by the decision of 12 righteous men who can stay out just as long as it takes to come back with a guilty verdict so we can hang the skunk. Yeah. I, 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 I'd like to have a few words in private with your honor. All right, step up to the bench, counsel. about Tattoo Joe no more. He won't stop running until he's in the next state. <laughs> best part is old Muff's been set free. Yeah, that's the best part. But I do kind of miss having a blood pact on something or other. Yeah, so do I. Let me see. Just nothing strikes me at the moment. But we gotta cook up something or life just won't be worth living. I got it! Got something real good! Just hold on, boys. The picture's getting clearer. Clearer all the time. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I'm seeing a cave. A cave? A cave with boards across the front of it. And a warning sign to keep out. It's gotta be McDougal's cave he's seeing. Nobody goes in there because the word is that it's haunted. Pirates must have spread that word way back to protect the treasure. I'm seeing something else. Water and, and fire. You boys just ought to stay out of there. But it's our chance to get rich. Real rich. And for seeing it, we'll get you rich too. You could be the only slave. What owns a slave? Don't want no slave. But that's mighty generous of you. We'll sneak in there in the dark of night, a black as ink night, so nobody gets wise. We gotta stock up the raft with provisions and be ready to get out fast. With all that treasure, who knows who'll try to do us in. I'm wishing you'd give it up. Just give it up. But if you got your heart set on it, I'll do some heavy brain, some real heavy brain, <laughs> way before the sun's up. I'll report it to the police. It's just a ham and in my own house. It doesn't matter whose house. Stealing is stealing. So as a concerned citizen, it, it is my duty to report it to the police. Well, while you're at it, report you also got a fist straight in your snoopy nose. <laughs> Sorry, 
it took so long. I had some business to take care of. You ready? I ain't going with you. You what? Can't go. I got business too. I'm rafting up the river with Jim. He's been sold. You hear that? Sold to some snake is gonna treat him no better than a dog. Cause all my life I was treated that way and I know how it feels. You ain't going? Gotta get Jim up north if things will go better for him. And the rafting's the only way. The only way we can sneak off without being spotted. But don't you want to get rich? Why not get rich first and then take them? There ain't time. Besides, I've been thinking about getting rich, and it ain't for me. You don't sleep nights worrying about your money and how someone's going to do you at it. Then you spend all your waking hours counting it up till you get bad eyesight and all stooped over at the shoulders. Hey, come on out, Jim. It's only Tom. We sure could use them vittles. Sure, sure, you can have them. You gotta call it off, Tom. The cave's just too dangerous alone. I just don't buy that malarkey about ghosts and stuff being in there. You saw water and fire, but no ghost, right, Jim? That's right. But the trouble with ghosts is you can see right through them like they weren't even there. I'm willing to take my chances. And if it takes a hundred years, I'm going to find you both. Well, you're sure going to need the help of the Lord. Hope he looks after you, Tom. Thanks, Jim. And good luck. So long, Tom. I'm sure going to miss you. Miss you, too. Where am I ever going to find a new best friend? So many gate crashers lately. A ticket? A ticket for what? The big show. And here's your program. Thanks. Without a program, you can't tell one ghost from the other. What, what kind of show is it? A circus, of course. All boys your age love a circus. And you'll have the best seat in the house. I've got some real pull here. <laughs> Follow me. It's soaking wet. My lamp will go out. I'll fix that. Peanuts, popcorn, crackers. 
Sir Jack, what'll it be? Well, take the pot. The peanuts are always too salty. It is my honor to present one of our premier attractions, Princess Paula and her perky puppies. No puppy. Now, throw the hoop. <laughs> we have a Visit from Tom Sawyer. Did you run off and join the circus? What circus, you numbskull? The circus, the one I just saw. <laughs> you mean the one in your head, don't you? I was seeing things too when I first crawled in here. And why are you here? If it's for the treasure, there ain't none. I comb this place clean, so you're as big a fool as me. But you're gonna be a dead fool. You ain't getting out of here alive. Gotta say, today, today's a red letter day. And that tomorrow looks extra bright. And when I raise my eyes, it's gonna be no surprise. If the sun stays out, the golden sun stays out, the golden sun stays out. Just get left. 
first citizen, Tom Sawyer. Tom has donated nearly all the treasure he found to be used in the betterment of our fair city. I have just left a meeting of the council and with them have voted to build a second schoolhouse. In closing, I can only say, Tom Sawyer, for president! Tom Sawyer never became president, but grew up to honor every person for what they were and owed a debt to no one.